You yeah. think I'm bad? You should see Hitler. He was even worse. Oh, okay, <laughs> sure. What do you mean? That's a great excuse. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. No one can be ever be as bad as Hitler. So everyone is on the same page. Hi, and welcome to a new episode of Bad Movies and Swedish Opinions. And today we have been watching a movie called How It Ends. And I can tell you how it ends. It ends in disappointment. It's the most unsatisfying movie I've seen in a very long time. And I'm blaming you on the guy who shoots. Yeah, this was my idea. I want to see this movie. And I accept the blame. This was not a good choice. So, yeah, I deserve your insults. Exactly, it was a good choice for this uh, podcast, but Jesus Christ, this movie was boring. Uh, very well, uh, let's let's continue. We could just we could just end end the podcast by saying saying how how boring it is. It, it kind of you know sums it up. But the, as I said, the title is How It Ends. It was released in the two in the year two thousand eighteen. The director is David. Rosenfall and was written by a guy called Brooks McLaren. Do you think he's uh, related to John McLaren? Uh, that's a good question. I have no idea. Let's Who is see. John McLaren? Uh, the guy in Die Hard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's John McLean. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. I, I had a joke there, but it failed. <laughs> That ah, doesn't matter. Uh, I was about to mock you for not knowing who, McLe- who, how, how, uh, who John uh, McLaren was, and then I failed myself. And then you were the stupid one. I am the stupid one, yeah. <laughs> so, it's a normal but, movie. Yeah, and speak of stupid, let's move into the movie. Um, we have a plot, of course. Uh, it's not much to say about this, but I'm going to give it to you, Adam, to explain it to us. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you're you're throwing this at me because I chose the movie. I get it. You're angry. Oh. Uh, okay. So the movie is about uh, this guy called Will and his girlfriend Sam, and they live in Seattle. It seems, and Sam is in Seattle, and Will is in Chicago. With uh, Sam's parents are also in Chicago, so I live there. And then all of a sudden, something happens that strikes the with coast of America, including Seattle. Some kind of disaster, so you lose all contact with it, and electricity goes down, and so on. And so, uh, Will and uh, uh, Sam's father, they get into a car, and they begin to drive to Seattle because they want to see that Sam is fine. Yeah. That is pretty much it. You managed to even extend it more than it was necessary. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it's basically a disaster. No one knows what's happening, but everybody seems to, you know, all get the information at the exact same time because it's just like three hours and it's all Mad Max out there. It's like really crazy. In the beginning, we get to be introduced to our characters. I would say that the first 15 minutes of this movie is by far the best. I mean, I was I was actually intrigued by the movie in the beginning, but it slowly fades away. So let's talk about the characters. First of all, we have a character called Will. Uh, who is Will? Will is the main character, and he's this handsome lawyer guy, and... Yeah, that's about it. He He's a very bland character. Yeah, we don't really get to know much about him, more than that he's uh, supposed to get married to uh, Tom. Sam. Yeah, but to Tom's daughter. Uh, <laughs> so, so, not Tom, but to, to, to Sam. That would and, be awkward. Yeah, <laughs> but it was really awkward in the beginning, so you, you wouldn't know. But okay, so so who is Tom then? Uh, Tom is the father of Sam, and he is a hard ass, 
trying to torture uh, Will, basically. He doesn't want them to be together, it seems. Yeah, he's, but, an old, he's an old military guy. Yeah, and he doesn't think anyone's good enough for his daughter, basically. Yeah, and he has some sort of trust issues, uh, because... Oh, we can get to that later. Let's let's talk about uh, the scene here first, where they are introduced. So Will uh, is uh, is having dinner with Tom and his wife, uh, Sam's mother. We don't really know much about her because she kind of disappears right away. But they are having din- dinner at least. And the point of the dinner is for Will to ask Tom for his blessing in order to get married to Sam. And this whole scene is, uh, what should I say? It's really awkward because you can really feel the tension of Tom not really liking Will and doesn't really want him to be there. And also he blames Will for moving away with his daughter. Yeah, this scene is basically the only scene in the movie that seems realistic and believable. Right, yeah, it's, it's a very emotional scene, and it's the only scene in the whole movie really that is really packed with emotion. Yeah, and you, and in this scene, you actually get a pretty good view of the characters. You really think that they're good actors, and that this might be something. That this might be something to to build on. You know, the relationship between Will and Tom. Hmm. Uh, well, everything goes to shit, and uh, Will is not really in a state of mind to ask Tom about the blessing because if you were on that dinner, I would have felt the same because it's really awkward. It's really stiff. Yeah. And so Will leaves the the apartment and that's pretty much it. What happens then? Then uh, Will goes to bed and falls asleep and Sam calls him the day after and tells him to wake up because he has to get on the flight to Seattle. But then the call suddenly ends when there is some interference and Sam says something is happening and that she's scared. And then the call ends and Will goes to the airport where like that all flights are cancelled, something big is going on. And then he goes back to Tom. Yeah. There is something happening um, out of the blue. You don't really know what. And, of course, this is happening at the same time that they were having some sort of video call, uh, Will and, and Sam. Mm. And, I mean, that call is strange, I mean, based on how it ends. I mean, wh- how, why would she say that something is wrong and then it would end? Wouldn't you, like, say something more? Or did she just have like three seconds and she shows, chose to say that? I don't know. Nothing makes sense in this movie. You, you yeah. don't get any information. And in, in the beginning, this is fine because this is supposed to, you know, build some sort of tension and, you know, uh, for us to, oh shit, what is happening? And, and you know, feel some sort of excitement. Uh, it dies pretty fast. But then, mm-hmm. as you say, Autumn, uh, Will heads back to Tom and his wife, which is the only logic decision that is is made during this entire movie. Mm. Because that is what I would have done as well. Uh, what happens then? What, what does Tom decide? Well, they think they should drive to Seattle to find his daughter, and he uh, asks Will if he wants to join him or not. And they basically take off. Yeah, and the distance between Chicago that they're at and Seattle is the east to the west coast. According to Google Maps, it takes roughly 31 hours if you drive it straight away. It takes a bit longer in the movie, I would say. Yeah, it takes five days. It takes five days. Jesus Christ. So they're driving like six hours a day, basically. Yeah. But they are yeah, not. Yeah. You see that they're doing nothing but driving and sleeping. Yeah, so it's so weird. Yeah, they do have some stops, uh, and I think we should talk about it. I mean, the the driving part of the movie is the longest, but also the most boring. 
I mean, that's basically the movie. They drive. They're on the road. That's the whole movie. Exactly. It's. Have you seen that uh, commercial with McConaughey when he's driving some sort of car and he's just talking randomly? That's basically what it is. It's a longer version of that commercial. <laughs> no, I haven't seen it. Oh, at least, and and also, I mean, in every every scene driving that they can, they always put the Cadillac brand in front of your face. It's like we get it. Uh, yeah, yeah, but they they start to drive at least. How long does it take for this chaos to take place? Yeah, probably just an hour or something into their drive. Yeah, I don't know. So, so from that moment when all of the air, airplanes are cancelled till they start driving, how long would you say that that is? Five hours? If even five hours? Yeah, not even five hours, I say. No, no. I'm guessing three. Yeah, it's very short, at least. But for yeah. some reason, it's become like World War Three or something. Every man for himself, looting stores, trying to get out of the city. I don't know where they're going, but everyone wants to leave the city, heading towards, I don't know, some other shitty city. I yeah, mean, I ev- people don't know anything. The only thing they know is that something happened on the West Coast. That's on the other side of the country. Why would people want to go there? Why not just stay on the East Coast? Yeah, because logic is not working at all in this movie. It's like if someone would say, oh, there is something going on in the States. And we in Sweden, we're like, oh, no, we need to go there for some reason. It wouldn't make any sense. No, it would not. And one thing that doesn't make any sense is that along the way, they don't really get uh, encounter any military checkpoints whatsoever. The only thing they meet are road pirates. It's like the whole world turned into Hunger Games in a day. Yeah. No, it's not a day. It's it's hours after. Yeah, okay, more like half a day. Yeah, it's half a day and people are running in chaos and, you know, starting gangs and whatnot. Yeah, then nothing a, makes a, sense. Apparently there's like shortage of stuff too. Like yeah, in half a day, like you can't even day, yeah. like pump uh, gasoline into your car because it's empty. Yeah, it's so stupid. And all the grocery stores, I guess they're looted too. Everything's uh, out. There's there's not a single word for the government. And all, I, I mean, of course, it seems like they mentioned it that all the satellites are down and whatnot. But isn't there any way to get out some information? to the military to give out to the people. That's why I think that the logical thing would be for them to like send out at least one small military unit to each settlement to at least try to create some order and reassure people that the government is going to get things under control again. You, you don't really get to see anyone from the government talking. The only thing you see is a news reporter at one point. That is all the information that you get. All the other things are just speculation. But okay, so, so we need to talk a little bit about the driving, because, you know, why not? The, the only thing that is happening here now is that they're driving, and they meet some other car. It's usually just one car every couple of... Every, couple, every day, I would say. Once a day, there's one car, and for some reason, they run into it, and for some reason, it's always bad guys. How could they have done this better? What more could have happened to make this interesting? Or is this movie meant to fail based on the premise? Everything is so... Nothing makes sense. Like, why why make it like this? It's so unbelievable that it's just... it's You zone out because it's nothing to... It's so illogical that you just get pissed. You know, I thought the concept was kind of interesting. Little I read about it, but they can't spend the whole movie just being on the road. They could have spent like twenty minutes doing that, so and then they could read Seattle, and then other things could have happened. Because now it just feels like a long movie where nothing happens because it's same goddamn road all the time. 
And and the, the only thing that would have saved this movie if something really good would have happened in the end. Like, but that doesn't really happen either. It's like nothing is happening. It's just it's just a, a just disappointment. Yeah, but yeah. during during the drive at least, you get some hints of the stuff that's happening. You can see at one point that an airplane has crashed. You can see a train that has crashed. You can see some forest fires. Is there something that I'm forgetting? Yeah, it was for something with the birds. No flying. I don't know. Weird. I didn't find it weird, but based on how the scene was played out, since they were filming the birds for such a long time, I imagine that it was some sort of plot device or some sort of explanation for something. But for me, it was just bird doing what birds do. Yeah, that's a really annoying thing about this movie, that it doesn't give any answers that you actually want. No, no. there's no hints at all during, the, during the, the drive. I mean, usually in these kind of movies, you kind of, you know, implement like small details. I mean, I'm all for that the ending can be up to the use to the to the viewer to you know think for themselves. Yeah, to think for themselves, you know. But you need to be fed some sort of information. It can't just be stuff is happening and the movie ended. Yeah, but one more stupid thing is that like they stop. Oh, we're going to save my daughter. Oh, we're going to save my. Uh, fiance, but oh, we're gonna have to stop every two minutes to do something stupid that we don't have to do, just to prolong everything. It 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 makes sense that they have to make one stop, I believe, and that can be you know finding gasoline, it can be water, it can be food. If you need food for that distance, I mean, you can survive without food for three days. I mean, come on. You're about to save your fiance. I mean, come on, put some effort into it. But okay, they're searching for food at least. And the one thing I didn't like was him taking a sidetrack, driving towards his friend's house. And the only reason I don't like this is because they had to drive so far uh, away from the main road. And they also needed to talk with, you know, some old sheriff and some shady people there and then they stayed at her house the friend's house longer than they needed for him to get a shower and whatnot i mean it's been one day can't you manage one day can't you just collect some food and water and just get out of there or do you yeah. need to i mean it makes no sense i mean why why stop to take a shower if you're in a hurry a shower isn't your top priority look let's be fair to him here his only good quality, really, is the fact that he's good looking. He really needs to shower. Yeah, because we need a scene to see his bare chest for some reason. Exactly. Once again, McConaughey, they, they just need to introduce some shirtless guy. I would, I yeah. would have preferred the McConaughey then. Uh, but, <laughs> okay, so, but here is the weird thing also. They, they get out of there, at least. They leave her friend, his friend, and they drive off. And then they make another stop. And this is literally the next scene. Yeah, and it's, dr- it's the it's, same day. It's the same day, and they see a water park, and, and they decide to stop there too. And this... you, they even say, let's see if we can find some water to collect. And you can see how they filled up water at the friend's house, like a ton of water. There is no way they can drink that much. <laughs> no, and where did they even store all that water? And how can they even have room for even more water? How much water do you need? <sighs> well, apparently very much. It's and a, you don't long, even it's see, a long you don't... boring trip. They need to have something to do so they drink water. You don't even see them <laughs> drink water. You don't get to see them drink water even once. That's and... actually a good point. You never see them actually drink. No, exactly. So they're just collecting in order to, I don't know, brag, sell. I don't know. So, but based on the weird stops that they do, you don't start to think that this is a disaster movie because, uh, first of all, it's there's haven't been so much happening that you that makes you believe that this is a disaster movie. 
The second of all is that you don't believe that they are in a hurry because it seems that, that they are stopping all over the places. Mm-hmm. And they are laughing and joking and, you know, trying to bond. And of course, they need dialogue, but I'm just saying that it's strange how much time they put by not driving when that is the main goal to get to Seattle. I mean, if someone is at a disaster place, does it make sense that every second counts or every hour counts that you don't know what happened there? Yeah, but my one of the most illogical things is, okay, we need to go to Seattle because that's where all the shit went down. But why would the people in Seattle stay in Seattle long enough for them to get there? Yeah. I mean, we can we can talk more about the end. I just want to mention one more thing. Hmm. We need to talk about the character, Ricky. I was hoping you would not bring her up. I, I was hoping you forgot about her. They... I, I, yeah, well, you could might as well because she she did absolutely nothing in the movie besides complain. They could have skipped her entirely, and nothing else would have mattered. Yeah. She's a mechanic, so she's supposed to be. I mean, it, I guess it's fine that they get attacked by pirates, road power pirates. And that they smash the car and they need to fix it. I guess that makes sense. I mean, it can happen, even though it's only been a few hours. But let's say that that can happen. And they need to find a mechanic. That is also fine. But what is it that makes them bring her? They did not have to bring her alone, no. They say it's because, oh, what if the... The cooler uh, is starting to leak again, and we can't fix it. Oh well, you just do. I can show you how to do this. No, you need to come along and show and do it for us if it happens. Like why? I mean, I mean, I think she's basically said that all you need is duct tape and you can fix it. Do you really need to bring a whole person for applying duct tape to a pipe? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, apparently, and and, and the, yeah, sorry. <laughs> No, she doesn't do anything either. So it's just a waste of time and energy for everyone. I, I think she was introduced in order to, you know, to create some new dialogue because the relationship between Tom and Will are so forced that it doesn't really work. And they need someone to, you know, uh, transition that relationship. So they need some, I need a third person to, you know, I don't know, help them. Yeah, and they chose to bring a third person that's the most annoying character you think of, so she doesn't provide any meaningful dialogue. No, she's just whining throughout the movie. Her catchphrase is, why are they there? Yeah, she says that all the time. <sighs> she's like a teenager. I don't know if she really is, but she's acting like one at least. Yeah, a bratty but, teenager. Yeah, and here's also the dumb part. Because just as sudden that she is introduced into the movie, she disappears in the most stupid way ever. Like you would never ever would have done. What she is doing is that she was kind of, you know, responsible for a car to, you know, flip over and people were killed. I mean, they were, f- they were attacking them first. So I don't really have a problem with this. But she seems to have a fragile mind at least. And she gets super you know sad about this and she asks uh, will to to stop the car and she gets out she runs up to the mountains you know to have some sort of mental breakdown and and throughout this scene i was just thinking oh come on just get in the car so we can get on with the movie but they fall asleep in the car and she just runs off into the forest in the middle of nowhere yeah, but if they actually cared about her and wanted her to come along, why did they just, oh, let's go back to the car and sleep for a while? That makes no sense. No. And why would they sleep at all? Take turns driving the fucking car. You need to get to Seattle. Yeah. yeah. And also, if they didn't care about her, they could have just driven away right away. 
Right. That also. I mean, Ricky is very aware of Will finding his wife in Seattle. So Ricky knows that time is of essence here. They really need to get going. She, she doesn't really have time to sit there and whine. And Tom and Will should also tell her that, that we're going to leave you now if you don't get into the fucking car. And she, and she will, you, you can cry in the car. We can drive and we can talk in the car, but we need to really need to get going, you know. But no, they're just, okay, she's crying outside. So let's, let's sleep for a couple of hours. I think Sam is okay, don't you? Uh, probably. It's so annoying how they, how they decided to, you know, write her off. It was like they changed the script in the middle of the movie because, geez, she isn't that funny. And also, Tom is going to die, and then we have Ricky left, and then we're going to have some sort of going to have some sort of face off later off in the movie. And it doesn't really make sense that Ricky's with us. Damn it, we shouldn't have written her into the movie. How can we get rid of her? We could kill her. Nah, don't do that. She's a girl. Right, right. How, what should we do? Well, she's a strong feminist character. She can run off in the woods and leave a freeze. Good. Let's do that. That is basically how I think it all played out. Yeah. It, it really feels like she was cut out since she didn't have a goodbye scene or anything. She just disappears. Yeah. Maybe, maybe she pissed off the director or something. That also makes fool sense. But okay, so let's, let's, let's walk towards the end. Let's walk towards the end because the, the driving is over now. I mean, I think it would have gone faster. Let's say that we were in USA and we were started driving before at the same time that we started this movie. I think we would have reached Seattle before them. Okay. Yep. Let, let's say they don't take turns sleeping every night like they should. Then if they sleep for eight hours each day, that means that they drive for 16 hours each day. If they make stops, then let's say they make the stops total of hour each day, so fifteen hours each day. So then they should reach Seattle in two days. We can be generous and say three if they encounter like road stops and such that lays them. But it now should you, yeah, it, yeah, shouldn't yeah, take we, more than three days. Yeah, we can be nice and say three days, but we're stretching it. It's fine, three days. If you're really slow or you have some problems, okay, three days. But how long does it take for them to drive? Five. It takes five days. I mean, if I were Sam, I would be straight up insulted. <laughs> I would have asked, what the, f- what the hell were you doing? <sighs> yeah, that size says it all. Yeah, and when they, re- when they finally reach Seattle, there is some sort of ashes. Oh, yeah, uh, we should probably all say that. Uh, before reach Seattle, uh, Tom dies. Oh, right, right, right. Tom dies. Uh, it was a super sad moment. Yeah, yeah, he had this long speech about how bad his father was and that he's trying not to be as bad. And then basically they face off with some more road pirates and his old injury he got from the beginning of the movie kills him eventually. Yeah. Isn't, isn't this always the case you know whenever two people are having like a bad relationship and tom in this case are acting like a douche already from the beginning and he's very aware of him being a douche and Mm. just for him to change his mind later on when he's about to die isn't that just come on don't say that you try to be good towards will you knew you were a bastard to him Yep. Don't don't give him that shit that you would try to be a better father or whatever. You knew you were a dick. Yeah, and just because his father was a dick doesn't mean that he has to be one. No, exactly. But that was basically his excuse. Yeah. You think I'm bad, you should seem Hitler. He was even worse. Oh, okay, <laughs> sure. What do you mean? That's a great excuse. <laughs> right, right, right. No one can be ever be as bad as Hitler. So everyone is on the same page. But okay, so, so we reach Seattle at this point, and it's raining ashes from the sky. Is this meant to be a clue towards what's happening? I don't know, but... Because you get two clues. It's the ashes in the sky, and that you, for some reason, can't breathe the air. Because he grabs a, a mask in order to breathe. 
What was your thought? What What did you think happened when you saw that, or didn't you think anything about it? It It looks like uh, the aftermath of a volcano outbreak or something. Yeah, I I was well surprised by how deserted it was because I I again think that if this was real life, then the military would appear and set up some kind of perimeter around the city to stop people from going in so they can figure out what exactly is going on. But he didn't encounter anyone in the area. No, Seattle was empty. There was there was nothing there. It was like Warsaw 1945. It was empty. It was nothing there. And and he still decides to walk into Seattle in order to find his old apartment to, you know, maybe she is there. No, Will, she is not there. That is a stupid move. She is probably dead. But okay, you walk towards this apartment and full disclosure, this building is cut in half. Would you have entered this building? Nope. Uh, probably not. Would you assume that there might be some sort of clues there towards nope. where she got? Nope. No, the only thing that I might might find there is her corpse. Otherwise, I don't think I would find anything. I guess a corpse is an answer to his question, but still, I wouldn't have walked in there. Uh, it doesn't really look safe. I mean, when when he when he actually goes inside, you can see that she, of course, has written a message on the board, on the on the, on the wall. wall. Yeah, exactly. And, he, and this one, and this is funny because you know the the how the the entire building is split in half. What if it was the other half that went down and not you know the it's one? It's also that... strange that it's. It's so clear on the wall that she had written with black marker. It didn't get covered with ash or anything. It's a very clear message. Yeah, I mean, this is that—that that is like super lucky. That's that's odds against everything. But still, you know, she wrote it, and the building is at least that part of the building is still, you know, standing. And he needs to take the decision to walk into a building that looks like it should collapse at every second. I mean, there's a lot here to, you know, go right in order for him to get this information of where she is. Yeah, it's not a big chance for for them to figure this out, but of, of course it works. And also, how did she know where to go? Where did why, How could she know that this place that they were going at was, you know, safe? Sa- yeah, I have no idea. Because they're still in Seattle. Or just outside, at least. Yeah, but still close enough. I mean... yeah. If there were problems in Chicago on the other side of the country, I would have guessed that uh, even if we're one mile outside of Seattle, we might get some problems. Yeah, apparently not. It works. And and Will finally finds the house where she's at. And here is where the movie kind of, you know, shifts focus. You should mention that this is the last 15 minutes. Yeah, this is the last 50 minutes. Yeah, exactly. So they finally find each other and it's like 50 minutes left. And, you know, how do they choose to use these 15 minutes? Well, uh, so there is this Sam aside. There's also her neighbor in Seattle. So uh, this was his, like, cottage or something. And they spend his time like barbecuing and such and then in the end the neighbor guy turns on will and tries to kill him and will kills him instead right so what basically is happening here in the last 15 minutes of the movie is that they're not focusing on it to be a disaster movie anymore they're not trying to figure out what the hell is happening they're trying to create some sort of drama between two guys and Sam. That is basically how the shows to do this. And since it's only 15 minutes left, they really need to force uh, the conflict between Will and his neighbor guy. And as you say, they are spending time barbecuing and here is supposed to be where they become, you know, enemies. And how do they choose to do that? Well, they sit around by the fire and uh, this neighbor guy here has 
some sort of theories about what happened because he is a computer programmer and he has seen all of the outcomes for possible disasters in the world. And uh, this is apparently an atom bomb that blows up in the ocean uh, uh, by the coast of uh, Los Angeles or whatever. And uh, that nuke creates a big tsunami wave that crushes the whole city. And that's his theory. And Will, for some reason, gets really pissed off by this <laughs> theory. It makes no sense. No. Let, the, let the guy have his freaking theory. Whatever. <laughs> exactly. Why is he angry about that? I mean, he <laughs> takes this really personally. He's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, he's angry for real. Yeah. And it's like, this other guy, he's like, I'm sorry, but I'm just, I'm just like, I'm just telling you my theory. I don't know. But, you know, we're just talking. Why are you so upset? I mean, he doesn't say that, but you can really like, feel it. Yeah. He really should have said that. And he does, and Will doesn't let this go. So we move on to another scene where he's sitting with Sam and just talking. And he's like, do you believe this theory? What do you believe? And she says, no, of course, because she wants to be like Will's on his good side. And I wonder yeah. what he believes instead. Does he think it's more believable that it's an earthquake rather than a nuke and an attack from a foreign power? Yeah, I, I don't know what he believes, but it doesn't matter. Every guess is good as mine. He, he shouldn't just be so pissed about that. No, he really got angry about that. Yeah, it was the dumbest thing I've seen anyone to be angry about. If you, <laughs> if you have such... If you're being... If you get angry for so for so little, then I'm feeling sorry for Sam. Because this guy, he's going to snap one day. And it's not going to be because she slept with another guy. It's going to be because she bought the wrong kind of butter or something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Will is a psychopath. Yeah. I can get more where the neighbor guy was like disappointed. He got cock blocked so hard. Yeah, he wanted to sleep with Sam. I mean, I can, I can get, I can, I get that. I mean, of course, he wishes for Will to be dead so he can, you know, like, you know, sweep, sweep in and be the right, hero. Right, exactly the word I was looking for. Uh, but uh, this neighbor guy, he decides to solve the problem by himself by luring uh, Will outside the forest. And I don't know really what his plan was here, but Will kind of, you know, understands that. The neighbor likes Sam, and and this neighbor guy wants uh, Will out of the picture. I mean, it wasn't really secretly, you know. It was a very bad assassination attempt. It was very obvious, also. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can see it from a mile away. Right, right, right. And of course, Will brings his weapon, and the neighbor guy he kind of puts his finger on the trigger. I mean, everybody saw that, and of. And he has his back towards Will, so he doesn't really have the upper hand. So Will kills him. Yep. And that's it. That was the end of that drama. The second <laughs> part of the movie, or the third, I don't know. And now we're really, really closing up to the end. Because after this, something bad is happening. What is happening, Adam? The, the thing that struck Seattle is happening again, apparently. So this ash cloud comes at high speed and again you don't know what the, what actually caused it but yeah so they throw themselves in the car and they begin to uh, drive to get away from it before it catches up with them they drive and it looks like it's about to catch up with them but then they manage to drive away from it and there the movie ends right what's the point of that yeah it, was that supposed to be some so, sort of cool scene? I don't know, but it, it it was a very disappointing ending to a very disappointing movie. I mean, it yeah. would have would have been better if they actually died there. Right, I thought so too. I mean, it, it yeah. wouldn't have saved the movie, but it would have made it at least a little bit better because it could have been this kind of movie that everything doesn't really work out. Yeah. But of course not. Have you seen the movie 2012? Yes, yep. and I hate it's... the ending. Right, right. It, it's actually not supposed to be the ending that I'm talking about, but my point is that in this entire movie, there is always like always like a millimeter 
from getting killed by something. I mean, it doesn't make sense that they survive. And yeah. the, it's the same here. It doesn't make sense that they were able to drive away from this super volcano or whatever it was. But at least there are a lot of cool scenes in 2012. You know, it, it's stuff happening all the time and it's actually exciting to see but this is just boring i mean i didn't like that movie but yeah of course stuff is happening if, if so if i were to choose a movie to watch i would watch that one but uh mm. this this is more of a low-key movie and uh I, and i mean th- this could still work but as adam said in the beginning they should have focused more of you know the Seattle place and not, you know, the driving because the driving is no one wants to see you driving from point A to point B. What movie was it that we saw that was basically just driving? It was a Bird- really bad Birdemic. Birdemic. Yeah. Right, oh, right, yeah. right. Like it's 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 nothing that you want to see. You don't care. You don't care. Yeah, nope. And you know the the reason I wanted to see this movie was because uh these are times when we have Corona, and I thought that disaster move would be fitting. But I really thought this one would be more, shall I say, intense. Right. It's actually, uh, you know, kind of, you know, mirroring the real world with Corona because nothing is happening here either. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, uh, you, you you want to see a disaster movie, but instead the movie was a disaster. Right, right. Yeah, That's a good yeah. end. I think we should. I think we should rate the movie now. Uh, so, who, Autumn, do you want to start? I guess I'll start since this is my fault. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, this has the movie. Uh, I really don't know what they were thinking when they made the movie pretty much only about the driving because they. There's no way that's exciting. I don't see how they could have made that exciting. They should have cut that like 20 minutes and focused on Seattle and the stuff that's actually happening. I don't know. Uh, normally, I love uh, when there are mysteries in movies and you kind of have to analyze and draw your own conclusion about what's going on. But this is not that kind of movie. It just feels, it just feels strange that they're not telling you anything when you have you have nothing you can actually draw conclusions from. Mm, seems pointless. Yeah, exactly. It just feels pointless. There's no reason why they shouldn't tell you in this movie, but they don't. So yeah, this movie is heck boring. That's all I can say. So I'm going to give it 2 out of 10. Yeah, and you know, uh, I can't believe this, but I'm actually going to you know, compare this to Birdemic again. <laughs> and the Birdemic is the winner in this argument. Because here is what I was, you know, having a problem with. The driving as the, the driving is super boring. And but I'm mean, if they really need to have this, they need also need to, you know, uh introduce clues to why this is happening. I don't know if they're trying to do so via the airplane that crashed and a train that crashed and a forest fire, but you don't really get a sense of what is happening because you, you, you're kind of guessing, is it like solar flares? Is it super volcanoes? Is it some pyroblastic? Is it an earthquake? Is it everything? We, we don't know. We have no clue what the hell is happening. And, you know... Uh, even in Birdemic, they ne- they understood that they need to introduce a character that explains what is going on. <laughs> of course, Birdemic is bad because they're like just throwing it into your face. But in in this movie, you don't even get that. You don't even get a character that you know sits down with them and like casually talk to them and then brings up maybe you know what what the hell what this is about. They don't do anything. It's just it's just something happened and we need to get to, to point B and we need to save her and that is it. And the movie doesn't really following their own roadmap because they're changing focus in the end and turning this disaster movie into some, some weird-ass drama movie. And that is not what you really want to see. In a disaster movie, you want to see something happening and you need to know why. 
Mm-hmm. So I'm going to give this movie a 3 out of 10 because it was so boring and unsatisfying. I basically agree with you. It's it's really boring. It's really pointless. Like the first 10 minutes are interesting enough because that's actually believable. But then everything just feels exaggera- exaggerated and like people are behaving really weird. Like, okay, there's a disaster in Los Angeles, Seattle, and over there on the West Coast. So uh, let's blow up things here in Chicago and let's kill each other for no reason. Well, the actors weren't that great either. You know, I like Forrest Whitaker. He plays Tom, and he's usually pretty good, but even he struggled. But I think that's mostly because of the plot, because what can you do when nothing happens? The effects were so-so, you don't really see much. And the thing you see is meh. And I can't believe this is almost a two-hour movie. It could have been an hour-long movie at most. It's just so boring, so pointless. And the ending was stupid. And I pretty much hate it. It gets a 2 out of 10 because of Forrest Whitaker, but otherwise it would have been a 1 out of 10. Yeah. That pretty much sums it up. Forrest Whitaker is the only good thing about this movie, and even he is not good enough. Yeah. Yeah. So there you have it. Uh, Thank you for listening, and see you next time. By the way, remember that you can contact us at bmso.contact at gmail.com. We are happy for all sorts of feedback and, of course, suggestions of bad movies. Right, guys? Right. Yeah. With that said, see you next time. Bye. Bye.